the drills that will have the most impact in helping you move forward in your poi journey, especially if you're a beginner. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. Today I want to share with you the five drills that I think are most important for beginners to take on in order to acquire the skills that they're going to need to get ahead. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I have down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friends of the channel, Leigh Machinsky and Becca Bekonen. Thank you both so much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. There are so many things to learn out there in the poi world. How do you know what to prioritize? How do you know what to practice? How do you know what you should be working on? I've been teaching poi now for a decade and a half, and in that time, I've noticed certain patterns in terms of what people learn and what people need as they're working through their poi journey. And I wanna share some of what I've learned with you. And specifically, I wanna give you the five most effective drills that I have given to beginners over the course of my career. The stuff that I have really seen make them shine and set them up for doing amazing things down the road. And we're gonna start this off with a poi technique that I like to call a tic-tac, that is moving the poi back and forth across across your body. A lot of us kind of instinctually have a feel for this, but I like drilling it in a more systematic fashion. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you do 10 reps, switching the poi back and forth across your body in six different positions. The first one is gonna be right here, moving your poi back and forth across your body from left to right and then back again. Think that you get in one rep every time the poi crosses and then crosses back. So we do one, two, Three, you wanna do a total of 10 reps with your hand sitting right in front of you like this. Now, you're gonna go ahead and extend your hand as far out away from you in front of your body as you possibly can and do another 10 reps. Now, you're gonna go ahead and bend your elbow so that the poi planes are pointed up towards the ceiling now. And again, get in 10 reps like this. Now our next move is that we're gonna switch this from what we call wheel plane over into wall plane. Notice the difference here. In this position, it looks like the poi is moving back and forth in what's essentially straight lines, and in this position, it looks like the poi is moving through circles. So to get a feel for this, it might actually be helpful to plant your feet and then turn your upper body in the direction of the hand holding the poi, in this case, to my right. I turn my entire body over to stage right and begin switching the poi back and forth across my body. You'll note if my upper body were facing towards the camera, it would look exactly like the last part of this drill. But since I've moved my upper body over towards stage right, as far as the camera's concerned, it looks like the poi is moving around in circles on the side of me. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my head back towards the camera while leaving the poi going back and forth in front of and behind my body. It's literally the exact same thing as this, I'm just pointing my head in a different direction. Again, from here, we're gonna have the hand just hang out towards the side of us and then extend as far out away from our body as it possibly can and then bend the elbow to get these planes moving up around your head and neck. You want to do 10 reps in each spot. So again, that is 10 reps with the hand out in front of us in wheel plane, extended as far as it can in wheel plane, and with the elbow bent in wheel plane. We also want to get in 10 reps with the arm next to us in wall plane, the arm extended completely as far out as it can go in wall plane, and the elbow bent in wall plane. This is gonna help us get down our plane bends in each of these different planar orientations so we can make choices about when the poi is in wall plane and when it is in wheel plane, and that's real important. Next up, a basic drill that teaches all the different modes of timing and direction, as well as how to transition between them. Timing and direction, if you're not familiar, is just how we talk about how two objects can move around each other in space. There are four different modes for timing and direction that we recognize, and this drill takes us through all four of them. So let's start off by reviewing all four modes. The first mode is just together time, same direction. Some people call this earth. And basically, it involves just moving our hands around in a big circle in front of us. We wanna keep our hands parallel and even the entire way through. There is also together opposite, which is also sometimes called air. Now, this involves the hands coming together 
at the top and bottom and splitting apart on the sides and crossing through the middle. So think they go down together, out apart, up together, and then split apart as they go through. Next up, we have split time same direction, which is gonna involve turning your body to one side. Uh, basically, I'm gonna turn towards stage right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make like my arms are doing the crawl stroke. I want my hands to always be pointing away from each other, up and down, side to side, up and down, side to side. I'm gonna to need to turn my upper body back and forth to open up my shoulders to either side in order to make this work. Please note, I am in each of these different timing and direction modes, making sure that the camera slash audience can see as big a profile of the circles that I'm creating as possible. Our final timing and direction mode is split time opposites, which looks like this. It is just like doing double dutch jump roping, and uh, this is also called fire by some people. Now, the way you can practice this is think that you're gonna clap your hands together and snap them with one up and one down, clap them together, snap them with one hand up and one down, clap, snap, clap, snap, to get a feel for bringing our hands together and separating them top and bottom. Cool, so the drill is to work your way between all of them because each timing and direction mode shares two positions with other timing and direction modes. Let me show you what I mean. We begin with together same, and as we're going around here, I want you to stop when your hands reach the bottom. From here, they'll separate out and switch into together opposite. From here, you're gonna stop your hands when they're out to the sides, turn your upper body, towards the side of the stage and start moving your hands in split time same direction. From here, we're gonna wait for this moment when the left hand is up and the right hand is down and they're gonna to come together over to the right, separate, come together over to the left, separate, come together over to the right, separate, come together over to the left, separate. We're now in split time opposites. When they come together over to the right, we can switch back into together same. So all together, we wanna do, say, four reps in together same. One, two, three, four, switch into together opposites. One, two, three, four. With our arms straight out to the sides, we switch into split time same direction. One, two, three, four, and then switch into split time opposites. One, two, three, four, and we start the whole thing over again. Together same, together opposites, split time same direction, and split time opposites. This is gonna take a little bit of practice before it starts to feel comfortable, but once you've got that in your body, you will be able to make these transitions with any poi tricks as well. So as cool as that is, our hands get to cheat because they don't have to worry about gravity. In this next drill, I'm gonna show you how you can get your poi on board to be able to change timing and direction too using stalls. All right, so this drill is gonna require that you know how to do several different things. Number one, be able to perform a butterfly in wall plane in front of you. It's also gonna require that with each hand, you know how to do a down stall and a bottom stall. A bottom stall is really just flinging the poi out and being able to pull it back in going the other direction. So if you have all these tricks under your belt, awesome. If not, I'll go ahead and include links to tutorials for all of them down in the description. All right, so here's what this drill is gonna look like. We're gonna start off with our poi spinning in together opposites or butterfly. And basically, I'm gonna take the right hand poi and I'm gonna start off by having it kind of flung out to the side here and I'm gonna drag it back down and around so that it switches direction. Now both of the poi are spinning clockwise in wall plane in front of me. Now I'm going to stall the right hand poi down and I'm gonna let the left hand poi keep on spinning. This takes a little bit of work because we're basically getting our two hands to do two different things, but this is part of the practice and one of the things that you'll get out of this, of course, is independence between the two hands, which is really clutch. So now I'm gonna bring back the right hand, bringing the poi up and over it, and we're gonna to return to a butterfly. Now, again, that section was the right hand poi pitches out, comes back, both poi are spinning clockwise in wall plane, and the right hand poi stalls down, comes back in butterfly. We're gonna do the same thing on the left side now. The left hand poi is gonna stall out, 
come back down and around, we wind up with both of the poi spinning counterclockwise relative to us in front of us in wall plane. Then it's gonna stall down, the right hand poi is gonna keep on spinning, and it's gonna come back in so that they are spinning in butterfly. Again, the left hand pitches out, comes back counterclockwise, pitches down, comes back in as a butterfly. So we're gonna go right hand stalls, right hand stalls, left hand stalls, left hand stalls. The whole pattern being butterfly, clockwise, butterfly, counterclockwise, butterfly. And we think right, right, left, left. Not only will this give you so much control over your timing and direction changes, but it'll also really drill in those stalls as well as give you a lot of control over your ability to do different things with different hands. Next up, we're gonna play around with three different ways that our hand and poi can move in tandem with each other. So the foundation here is that our hand is just gonna move around in a big circle. And we've got a bunch of options for what the poi can be doing as our hand is performing this. The first option is that the poi just does what we would call a pendulum. That is, we never put enough energy into the poi to let it go over the hand. It's always hanging below it. So it kind of goes across us in a straight line on top and down and around underneath the hand on bottom. Next, we work our way up to what we would call an extension. That is, the poi itself becomes an extension of our hand and we're putting enough energy into it that it just stands out as a straight line going from our shoulder. And then we go ahead and turn this into a flower, namely an inspin flower. I'm going to add extra spins to the poi as my hand moves around a circle. I'm going to add two petals, so I'm spinning the poi head around the hand on top and on bottom. So, all told, I'm going pendulum for eight reps, extension for eight reps, and inspin flower for eight reps. And then I work my way back down to an extension and then a pendulum. What this is designed to teach you is how much energy you have to put into the poi in order to achieve the different poi patterns and shapes that you're looking to. This is really helpful for developing a lot of nuance in how you move the poi and of course, be able to transition between a variety of different moves. All right, so before I share with you my final pick for the poi drill for beginners that I think is most important, I have a favor to ask. If you've come this far, I'm gonna guess that it means that you are interested in learning poi. And guess what? I create lots of videos on that topic. So if you wouldn't mind going ahead and leaving a like for this video and subscribing to the channel, you'll be able to know the next time I upload a video. And even better than that, you'll help my channel grow. All right, and now my last pick for the most important drills that I give to beginners is performing real turns. Now, this might seem kind of underwhelming, but this actually teaches something really, really important. And in fact, uh, this was a trick that I learned back in the day that caused me so much consternation because I had a tough time with the central concept buried within it. All right, so let me show you something kind of wild here. Uh, right now, I have the two poi spinning forwards at either side of my body. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring the right poi over so that they're both on the same side of my body and then cross the left poi over to the other side of my body. Now, relative to me, it looks like the poi are spinning reverse. I have turned from forwards to reverse. Now, I'm gonna bring them back both to the same side of my body. I'm gonna let them both go up towards the ceiling and when they come back down, they'll be split once again to either side of my body. So there's a couple interesting things that happen here. The first is that relative to me, it looks like the poi have changed direction. Have you noticed that in the course of that, also each of them have had to switch which side of my body they're on. My right hand moves over to what feels like my left side and my left hand moves all the way over to the left. When both of those actions have happened, it looks to me as though the poi have changed direction. But before that, I'm in a space where they either look like they're both going forwards, both clockwise, both reverse, and then going back, they're back to clockwise. The lesson buried inside of this is something called plane facing. That is, whenever I turn with the poi, I have to bear in mind they're gonna switch which side of my body they're on. When that happens, from my perspective, the direction the poi are spinning in changes. Right here, they appear to be spinning clockwise relative to me. 
And when I'm on the same side of them that the camera is, they appear to both be spinning counterclockwise. So this is a good thing to keep in mind when you're moving around with poi at all. And just drilling these reels is a great way to start to build this information into your brain. We humans naturally want the objects that we use to move along with us. So as far as we're concerned, the poi should always be moving forwards, right? And we always find it so confusing when the poi doesn't seem to move the way we expect it to. When if we learn how to move in tandem with the object and let the object move the way that it wants to, according to its own momentum and inertia, all of a sudden our capacity to move with it gets much, much smoother and, to my eyes, looks a lot cooler. So all told, the drill here is just to work on doing 10 reel turns across one side of your body and then doing 10 reel turns across the other side of your body and then being able to do a 360 degree turn in one direction, say 10 reps, and then doing a 360 degree turn the other direction for 10 reps, just like that. Wicked, so those are my picks for my top five favorite drills to give to beginners. What did you think of these drills? Were any of these things useful to you? Also, if you dug these drills and you'd like more of them, I produce a weekly drill for my Patreon supporters. If you sign up at the Flow Circle level over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi, you will get a new drill just like any of the five that I just demonstrated delivered straight to your inbox every single week to help you practice and get ahead in your poi spinning. So, give that a look. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. This video would not have been possible without the kind support of all of these lovely people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon. They and the people listed down in the description help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you all so very much for your support for my channel, my work, and my mission. And if you'd like to check out more beginner poi lessons, I will go ahead and include a link to some videos that I've done down in the description, as well as up here on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, this top video right here is something the YouTube algorithm thinks that you might like because it has been popular with other viewers of my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to get out and flow today, and I'll see you with a new video real soon. Peace.